Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Week in Sustainability. I am Alyssa Ray, the Chief Sustainability Officer at Sustain Life. I am joined here today by my colleague, Ben Gruitt, a senior manager on our sustainability solutions team. Hey, Ben. Hey, Alyssa. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm doing good. We've got a couple of good upbeat stories today. Pretty excited to share. First one being the UK's creation of a new department that includes the, the words net zero in it, which is very exciting. And then there's some early results on the Inflation Reduction Act that that's pretty exciting to see where this is going. So it's, I guess I'll go ahead and kick it off with the first story. Yeah, um, let's hear it. All right. So the UK just recently announced that they are essentially disbanding one very large department, the Department for Business, uh, Energy and Industrial Strategy and dividing it into four departments. So back in 2016, then Prime Minister Theresa May actually disbanded the Department for Energy and Climate Change. It basically like grouped together business, industry, energy, and science into one big department. Now, seven years later, the UK has decided they're going to go back to previous form and they're creating a new Department for Energy Security and Net Zero. So in practice, what does this mean? We don't fully know yet, because it's a lot of it's going to depend on how the depart the various departments are structured and who is like elected or appointed secretary of state there. On the plus side, there will be a department fully dedicated to energy and net zero. So they'll get a voice in every cabinet meeting and be able to make arguments and policy papers without worrying about other issues. So that's a plus. On the downside, it's going to be a much smaller department than the previous business, energy, and industrial strategy department was so they might have less clout than they previously had maybe not quite as high a pro profile secretary of state so really we're just going to have to take a wait and see attitude but it's a very exciting development that they have a specific target in their in the form of net zero and not just kind of climate change writ large i think that's a very positive sign the rest i think is going to be very like wait and see let's see how this department's structured who they appoint, and we'll we'll take it from there. You're so right. That's actually really meaningful to have this department not just be climate action or you know department of uh, you know advocating for climate change, but net zero. Like that is the bottom line. That is the goal. goal that is yeah. what we're anchoring this in. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm going to bring it back to this side of the pond with some news around the Inflation Reduction Act and how it has added over 100,000 new jobs to the American economy already since it was initially signed just in August, which is pretty incredible. So for those who don't know, a little reminder on the IRA, and we'll post some materials that we've published on this in the past, this is the most powerful piece of, uh, this is the most powerful climate bill in U.S. history. This is a $370 billion funding package for clean energy manufacturing and environmental justice initiatives, all to propel U.S. emissions reductions. And it's estimated that it's going to achieve 40% reduction by 2030. So pretty incredible. And so where are all of these 100,000 jobs coming from? The bill provided a lot of incentives for funding of domestic clean energy projects. And to date, again, this was only signed in August, there's been 90 projects already launched across the U.S., totaling $90 billion in funding. So what is this? This is a lot of new wind and solar and EV manufacturing which means in the U.S., new positions for electricians and mechanics and construction workers and technicians. And this is what domestic manufacturing looks like in the clean energy era, which is just incredible. Most of these jobs are most densely located in a couple of states. They're in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. And so very interesting to see that it is a lot of red states that are benefiting from the employment benefits of these new clean energy projects, when, of course, it was those very same senators that, you know, signed against supporting this bill and fought it so, so viciously. So we're just getting started on this legislation. Again, it was signed in August of 2022, and it's projected that over the next decade, this bill is going to add 9 million jobs to the U.S. economy in clean energy and climate related projects over the next decade. So pretty incredible to see a strong start it's having right out the gate. We're big fans of the Inflation Reduction Act here of Sustained Life as no surprise to anyone. And we'll keep you posted on how that goes over the next couple of months and years. So that's what we've got for you all this week. Thank you so much for joining us. A quick reminder, don't forget to join us for our next webinar, Preparing for Third Party Assurance on February 15th. This is where our team is going to talk you through a new feature that we're launching here at Sustained Life 
all around the emissions factors and formulas to help companies seeking emissions verification, both for voluntary reporting and assurance for financial grade disclosure. So we'll link the event in the video, video description. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week for more news and sustainability. Thanks, everyone.